All right, I'm going to get this started okay, give it to you <coughs> a little bit later than usual. Thanks for everybody for understanding the uh, quirks in your schedule. So I'll call to order the December 16th meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board being recorded by ACMI. Uh, first on our agenda this evening, you're going to keep it with the board. Uh, we have three public hearings tonight. Two of those have asked for continuances, which we will need to vote on. Um, <coughs> so the first up is Apothka which is the uh, <coughs> recreational marijuana site at 1386 Mass Ave, docket number 3610. So we have a letter from their attorney requesting a continuance to January 6th. They think they'll be ready. My understanding is that they're working some things out with some other departments in town who want to handle <coughs> traffic and parking issues with that before they're ready to come back and answer our questions. So with that, I would uh, take a motion to continue. That docket to January 6th, which is actually going to be our next meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. All right. So we'll let them know to come back on the 6th. And second is the hotel project. Um, and all of a sudden, we can switch back here. But uh, <clears throat> my understanding is they're still working with the town uh, departments to answer some of the questions that the board had, some of the questions that the abutters had, <coughs> make sure that they're fully prepared to answer those questions the next time they come back. And they've asked for a continuance to January 27th, and that's docket number 3602, 1207, 1211, Massachusetts. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. All right, that takes care of that much faster than the 10 minutes that was allotted for it. Uh, so <clears throat> again, we're taking things a little bit out of order this evening. Uh, so now I will allow for members of the public who wish to speak uh, to be heard and give you the next few minutes to do so in our open forum. Uh, if you have a comment about 833 Mass Ave or the Atwood House, please hold that until that hearing, just in the interest of fairness uh, when that applicant is here. So if there's anyone who wishes to speak, please raise your hand and I will recognize you. I, uh, sorry. I was, I was just going to say Bob. Bob's not here yet. That's all right. We're, we're, you have until 8.30, so we'll call okay. you in. Okay. Go ahead, Don. Hi. Don Seltzer, Irving Street. Uh, regarding the last item on the agenda, the Heights Hotel, I sent a letter out to the board. I hope you've received it and perhaps have read it by now. Um, I just wanted to address the second point in my letter, and that is the special permit fee. Um, as you know, uh, when the applicant came before you, actually filed for this, um, this special <coughs> permit back in late spring, um, he did not pay this fee. He claimed he was exempt because of a deal he had with the town regarding the purchase of 1207 Mass Ave, uh, which is part of the property where he proposes to build the hotel. Um, there are a couple problems with this. One is that the people in the town who negotiated this deal simply do not have the authority to exempt a builder from all permit fees. Uh, they didn't even ask your advice, approval, opinion, or, or anything in advance. And the second problem with being um, exempted from these fees is that he hasn't completed the deal yet to buy the property. Uh, if this exemption is legal, then it should be contingent upon him actually having purchased the property. Um, it's my understanding he can basically walk away from the deal at any time and without having even paid the special permit fee for all the time and effort that has gone into um, hearing him about it. Now, questions about this fee were brought up before the first hearing on July 22nd. And the board at that time said that they would consider hearing a request for a waiver of that fee at a future meeting. And that was August 12th. And at that time, um, at least two members of the board expressed some reservations about the legality and wanted more time to consider it. And you voted to 
um, postpone that consideration until October 21st meeting. October 21st came and the applicant didn't show up. Uh, the topic wasn't um, brought up or raised or discussed. So as far as things stand, the board has yet to approve any sort of waiver. Um, and the applicant hasn't paid the fee that he's required to do by your, your own rules uh, at the beginning of the process. And all this has left the board in a pretty uncomfortable position. Um, you have been asked to retroactively approve a single um, suspension of your own rules for someone who is involved in buying property directly from the town. Uh, and it's a deal which unfortunately has a number of red flags associated with it. It's not the kind of thing that the board wants to be dragged into um, involuntarily. What I have suggested to you is that the best course of action for this board is simply to reject the suspension of its rules, require that the applicant pay uh, the full fee, and he can then pursue with the other town officials, the one who granted him this exemption, some sort of refund in the future when, or even if, he actually completes the deal and buys the land in question. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Other comments, questions, concerns from? Yes, sir. Um, just uh, some some questions. I uh, name and address. I'm please. Sorry. Uh, Marlon Banta on Clark Street. A letter to the, the proposed hotel project. Mm -hmm. um, I'm quite new to this, so I have a lot of <laughs> probably obvious questions. I had a lot of trouble finding the documents uh, related to the, this proposal. Um, I found them a few times in the past, and and don't see that they've uh, changed. I did raise a concern about uh, the solar access study. Um, it, when I've run these models, you can either use a planar ground or one that slopes down, and the land behind the hotel would slope down, which would extend the shadows out. It looks as though they just used a planar projection, um, and so I don't, I don't see, um, I haven't been able, been able to see an updated version of the solar access study. And, and my concern is, you know, uh, uh, nearby residents, including myself, with with uh, solar panels. Um, also, I haven't uh, heard of any change to the proposal for only 26 spots for a 50-room hotel, parking spots. Um, that raises a lot of concerns. I, I, I live on Clark Street. We're a private road. We don't, you know, we, we're very grateful for when the town plows our road. But any repairs or anything like that, we, we have to take care of it. Um, and, you know, what do we do if there's hotel guests parking their cars on our street, which there likely would be in the event that they, they reach the 80% occupancy rate required for a hotel to become profitable. Um, you know, I do share concerns about waiving the fee. The, I heard they got the land for $750,000. In that neighborhood, that's a really sweet deal. I mean, I, I wish I could buy that. I mean, so to me, for we, have, we, have <laughs> we have no authority over the purchase price. I mean, but, yeah. but, but I mean, it, it's waiving fee, cheap purchase price, and then they want relief on the parking spots. Um, and, you know, again, I, we would love to have a nice, you know, fancy hotel there, some place where me and my wife can go have dinner. Um, as long as they're a good neighbor and it's a good deal for the town, you know, we, 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 we welcome them. But I, there are concerns about the, you know, 26 spots. And so I do, you know, just what, what advice do you have as far as finding, you know, updated documents? Um, you know, I've, I've looked on the town website, type in docket 3602, look on the agendas. Mm -hmm. um, what, what's on the website is what we have. Okay. And then, and then, so if that's what we have, I'd look at their lead, you know, spreadsheet, and come on, we, we can't allow businesses to come into our town and not be at least lead certified or lead silver. It's, you know, in Boston, you, what's the standard, lead gold, I think, for a new commercial development? It's, it, it's, it's, um, I don't believe that it's a requirement. It's, it's similar to, to Arlington in that there is a checklist and an attempt to be made, but you're not required to actually go through the certification. <coughs> and that's what we're requesting of this applicant. And that was a part, a, a note of discussion at the last meeting. We, we gave some feedback for 
our expectations on improvement against that. So mm -hmm. um, all of the things that you have just brought up are all things that I believe the applicant is working on currently due to the um, input that he received from from both the uh, members of the community as well as the board. I mean, just but we haven't seen it. Yeah, we haven't seen it. We haven't seen it. New. I, I would, I would pressure them to, you know, uh, <coughs> obtain at least LEED certification, silver, gold. Um, Harvard University in their building development plan, um, they mandate LEED gold at a minimum and, and strive for LEED platinum. And at LEED gold, they see a two percent increase in building costs paid back in uh, six years. Mm -hmm. So as soon as as soon as yeah. plans are submitted, <coughs> they go up on the website. So I think you can sort of see what I'm saying. So the plans that I, I saw in the summer and just a few weeks ago are the same plans. That's why the hearings continue. So still 20 seconds. That's why the hearings continue. Right. Yeah. yeah. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak before I call on Mr. Seltzer again? Go ahead. Without without getting into a long back and forth discussion. No, I just wanted to address that last point. One reason why those plans are difficult to find is that. You'd have to go know which particular meeting they were associated with and know that they're correspondence and go to the link for items, correspondence, and then click on it, and then eventually you get to the individual submissions. What I was just going to suggest to the board is that I know in a couple times in the past where there have been major projects, you elevated up to the top level of the redevelopment board page as a link to click on and then all the de documents are there. I think that would satisfy this gentleman's needs and everyone else's if it was easily accessible that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. can, can I say something Go ahead, in yeah. response mm -hmm. to both of us? The points you raised were points raised when the applicant came in by both the board and a lot of people who were um, attending mm -hmm. during the public hearing. And we don't know what they're going to say when they come back. I have the same concerns you have, and I expect to see a much different and better proposal. And if they don't, I'm not sure where they're going at this point. So, that, so. that's the meaning of a continuance, is that they've asked, they've they asked need to, more time. Yeah, to, they need more time. And yeah. we're continuing to, to January? <coughs> January 27th. January 27th. So yeah. okay. that's why, I think, because they weren't going to get approval with what they presented to us the okay. first mm -hmm. time. So. Um, I don't know what to do about the fee. I don't know that the way it was set up was illegal, as you say. Um, I haven't seen any legal opinion that says it's illegal. I just don't know what to do about it, and we're certainly not going to do anything about it without the applicants here and without it being on the agenda. So we can't do anything about it tonight. Mm -hmm. And we did ask town council to opine on it. He has. He's provided his opinion. Uh, the, the short answer to that is that the board has the authority within its discretion to waive certain permit fees um, if and when the applicant comes back or we visit that discussion when the time is right. <coughs> so I don't think any decision has been made one way or the other on that internally or <coughs> certainly we haven't taken a vote on it yet. And by internally, I just mean I haven't made, come to my own decision. Yeah. Uh, other comments for open forum. All right. So the hearing for 8:33 Mass Ave was advertised for 8:30, and unfortunately, we can't begin that until 8:30. So I'll take a brief recess until 8:30. Uh, don't go too far. Please stay in your seats. Uh, we'll get started right at 8:30. We'll take a brief recess. All right, we're going to bring the uh, meeting back for some recess. And before we bring the proponent for 833 up, uh, during the break, Aaron went and grabbed something. I just want to make a point as far as uh, total seven, twelve, eleven, 12, 11, as, uh, as far as the fees that are being <coughs> discussed here. The applicant actually has paid, already paid 50% uh, of what the application fee would be, which is the only fee that this board would have the authority to waive. Uh, would be the application fee, the permit fees, uh, any other department's fees. So far, they've paid two thousand six hundred ninety-four dollars and thirty cents out of a total fee calculated to be five thousand three hundred eighty-eight sixty. That's some point in the future we'll have, have a discussion on that. This was provided to us in a memo dated August seventh, a meeting over the summer from uh, Aaron and Jenny in the department. So, 
there's any questions about that, that that was public record. May I respond to that? Quickly. Um, I don't want to have it back and forth okay. about this stuff. Okay. Quickly. Uh, I, I would have been glad to early if you brought up, but I, I know I'm familiar with that memo, and it's an opinion, I believe, of Jenny and somebody in inspectional services. Um, I don't know what the rationale is saying that, well, half the fee would be okay. Uh, I would note that of the properties, 1207 is merely a third of the entire land in the project. And uh, if you're going to go down that path, the proper thing would be to say two-thirds would be. But even then, I question what... It's not up for discussion this evening. Okay. So your input is taken. Okay, Thank you. I'll, that's, I'll leave it at that. All right, so moving on to... <coughs> Thirty-three Mass Ave, uh, which is yeah. special permit docket thirty-three forty-eight. Uh, so here we are discussing the thirty-three Mass Ave. Councilor. Okay, uh, we're back again. Robert Anessi for the petitioner. Uh, to my right is Monty French. Monty's the architect. Uh, Jeff Noyes, you all know from the last uh, meeting we had. Uh, we are here for the purpose of giving you an update with regard to where we are. Uh, and to start off, I'm going to say that it's very complicated from the point of view of trying to mesh everything <coughs> with that 2009 ARB decision in terms of what it said. Uh, it talks about a lot of things. It talks about uh, uh, maintaining the Atwood House. And by the way, we don't uh, uh, quarrel with that, okay? Uh, we may not be able to maintain the entire uh, house, but we are certainly going to do our level best to work with that. You have received, uh, you should have received, a structural report uh, dated June 26 of 2018 that was addressed to Michael Byrne, the building inspector, uh, and that report indicated that the structure uh, was in fact stable, except in, in acceptable uh, shape. Monte had one of his representatives go down to the building as well, take photographs, check the building out with respect to stability, and uh, uh, Monte's individual agrees with that assessment. So, so we're working with the idea that we're going to uh, try to stay with the Atwood House. We're not going to uh, be asking at some point that the building come down, okay? Uh, but again, there would have to be substantial changes because of the building itself. Now, uh, I talked about the ARB decision. Uh, it's a little complicated because what you've got is a decision from 2009 that talks about the CVS store going up, then talks about the retention of the Atwood House. Uh, I question whether in fact there was a lot of thought that went into zoning issues with respect to retaining the Atwood House on the site. Uh, a couple of issues leap out at me. Uh, one would be perhaps open space. Another one might be FAR, but even beyond that, uh, if you read the decision uh, from 2009, it talks about 10 parking spaces being allocated for the Atwood House. Now, the difficulty is that if you look at those 10 parking spaces on the plan that you have, you need to keep in mind that access to the Atwood House would be through the same access that the pharmacy enjoys uh, on the plan. And there's a turnaround with respect to that access way for the pharmacy customers. They have to turn around. Now, when they turn around in that area, query, are they going to be intruding into any of the 10 parking spaces allocated for the Atwood House? I think if you look at the plan, there's a reasonable inference that could be drawn that that would be the case and perhaps is the case uh, presently. Uh, so there's a conflict there. Uh, and that's why I'm suggesting to you that uh, maybe that issue would have to be looked at from our point of view uh, with respect to the building inspector 
uh, regarding uh, the access, regarding the turnaround and all of that. Now, CVS, in my opinion, as a lawyer, is cast in concrete. So that can't change, okay? But if something is going to change, it's going to have to uh, be what happens with the Atwood House and how we can mesh that. But again, uh, the fact that the ARB back in 2009 said, here's what we can do, here's what we're going to do, that doesn't mean we can do that, okay? Because it has to pass muster with the building inspector uh, as well, okay? So we haven't gotten to that point yet, okay? We are looking at it, we're uh, going to be coming up with a design. We want to go with multi-use uh, in terms of the first level perhaps being officer, office or something of that nature and we want to go with reg, uh, residential above. Uh, I know there was talk way back, there's nothing in the ARB decision about that, uh, there was talk way back about affordable housing. We're not interested in affordable housing. We can't do affordable housing economically. Uh, we need to, uh, if we're going to develop the site, develop it, but we can't do it uh, by way of giving a donation to the affordable housing concept. We need to uh, make a profit. Uh, that's why we exist, okay? Uh, we, 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 we need to do that. Uh, we need to uh, pay money to people who are going to do the work to construct the building. Uh, now, uh, in addition to the uh, complications as far as zoning are concerned, uh, we are now on the list, okay? The ARB decision in 2009 said the building was not significant, okay? Well, somehow after that, the building got on the significant list. Now, I know John Worden has done a great history, uh, and he educated me, and I've, I grew up in this town, okay? I went to high school here when Noise Buick existed, okay? But he uh, brought to my attention history about the site I never knew before, okay? Uh, and that history is, is all good, okay? Uh, but again, uh, when you're talking about a significant building, uh, it's a different issue, but in any event, that issue is now foreclosed to us from arguing against it because we are now are on the list. So therefore, in addition to dealing with you folks, we need to deal with the Historical Commission. So we need to go before them. Now true with them, if we decided that we wanted to take the building down uh, and they said no, we could wait a year and do it, okay? but we're not interested in battling that issue, okay? What, what we're uh, interested in doing is coming up with a solution that makes sense, okay? Makes sense for the site, makes sense for my client, who again, has got to put a lot of money into this to rehab the building, to redo the building, uh, and, and it, it, if that can't happen, it doesn't make sense for him. Now, look, the ARB back in 2009 could have said, we want the uh, Atwood House to be done now, at the same time the CVS building was done. Never did that, okay? Uh, and that's one of the reasons why it's gone on as long as it has. Uh, uh, with, with regard to the Noyes family, uh, there have been dynasty issues in terms of the assets that had to be resolved. The father's estate got resolved. Uh, about maybe three or four months ago, we're now in a go position in terms of wanting to get this done and getting this moving along. Uh, there's conservation issues as well. Uh, I'm given to understand that there's a culvert back there that's covered, uh, but in, in any event, uh, uh, they went before the Conservation Commission back in 2009. There is an order of, of conditions recorded at the Registry of Deeds. So again, we're here now, we want to come up with a plan. Uh, what I don't want to do is get into a battle with anyone, okay? I don't want to get into a battle with the ARB, uh, with the Historical Commission. I want to work with everybody and try to make something happen for the site. But there has to be an understanding that uh, we're going to have to spend a lot of money to make that happen uh, and uh, again, I recognize John, uh, John Worden's uh, concern about the history of the Atwood House, uh, and that's all well and good, okay? But we need to do something with the site right now, and something with the building, 
Uh, I would agree it's gone on far too long uh, in, in the condition that it's, it's uh, been for a lot of different reasons which I've indicated. So uh, again, we're, we're, uh, we're actually working on that. Monte is going to be coming up with a design for us that we could look at. Uh, we need to look at the site in terms of the zoning bylaw to see how many residential units we can get in the building. Uh, we uh, we uh, look at the, uh, uh, the property from the point of view of the office, perhaps on the first level, and what has to be done to satisfy zoning. So before I come back to you folks, uh, I intend to come up with a plan with Monte and Jeff and sit down with the building inspector because, again, I have to pass muster with, with him for zoning purposes before I can talk with you folks about environmental design and uh, issues related to the jurisdiction of the ARV. So that's pretty much where we are. Would you like to add anything to that? Uh, no, I mean, I agree. We need, to, we need the opportunity to just get, I mean, we did walk the site in the building, um, we just need the opportunity to survey it, document it uh, through drawings and such, and then, you know, do some research in terms of photos and things like that and see how we can, um, you know, bring the thing back to life. So we just need time, and like, you know, like Bob said, we've got a lot of studying to do with the zoning because of the way it's situated on the site. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that this particular site is B4, okay, and uh, was a vehicle-oriented site, okay, before uh, CVS went in, okay, and it's a B4 uh, zone now. Uh, so we have to work with that as well, uh, but I think it's important to keep in mind that what is happening as far, and by the way, there's 79,000 square feet on, on the lot, that's a big lot. But uh, uh, we need to keep in mind that uh, we're improving uh, the site from a vehicle-oriented site to a, a site that is not vehicle-oriented. And if you read in the bylaw, uh, the district regulations 5.25 uh, under B4, as these businesses are talking about vehicle-oriented businesses gradually close, the town has encouraged conversion of the property to other retail, service, office, or residential use, particularly <coughs> as part of a mixed-use development. That's what we want to do. Any well, questions? <coughs> I appreciate the fact that you're all here. And uh, hiring an architect is a positive step in my mind. Um, I don't disagree that you have a lot of work to do. What's a reasonable timeline? Uh, Monte, from the point of your design point of view, well, the, like I said, the first thing that we need to do is it, we need to get the building in a shape where we can actually get in there and survey it. So I think it takes some remediation. Uh, there's some things in there that don't really allow people to walk into it right now. So that will have to happen. And then once that happens, we'll have to have probably a week or so to go through the building, survey just the footprint volume and openings and then all the relevant historical details that we think that need to be documented. And then that's just the basis that we'll start with. Mm -hmm. and then then from there, we'll know the volume and everything that we're dealing with, and we can study the zoning piece of it. Um, and I think that, you know, that part of it will get us started, and that will allow Bob to have this discussion. So that's probably going to take, once I can get in there, maybe a month. One of the other things we're thinking about is the possibility of a subdivision. However, uh, that creates problems, too, because of what I said earlier. Uh, and that is the access uh, uh, to the site, uh, the turnaround issue for the CVS <laughs> pharmacy, uh, the invasion of the parking spaces, potential in intrusion into the parking spaces. Uh, so all of that would have to be taken into account. I suppose you could think about doing something like that uh, by way of having an easement uh, situation uh, uh, prepared, okay? But again, we're not there yet, so we're not even talking about uh, a, a, we're thinking about it, but not really seriously talking about it until Monty does his work. Any questions? Well, I'd still like to figure out, uh, push for a, at least a high level timeline, okay? Uh, Monty said a month to do that. From the time he can get in. 
yeah. which says to me, yeah. That's reasonable. I think a month includes the time. Just I mean, document. Just there's some, there's some remediation there that's document. just cleaning up. It's not really the, yeah. uh, any hazardous material, I don't believe. Well, the mold is the issue. Yeah, but that's a week. Getting someone there. Just get, okay. Yeah. But, okay. We'll give you two months to remediate yeah. and to document, okay? I'm just thinking high level, that's all, okay? Sure. Sure. Yeah. And what do you guys think uh, to study uh, the best use for that? Another two, three months? I think once, uh, well, yeah. We look for estimates. We're not, we, we're not going to hold you anything to it look, and say, okay, this look, thing is not for any, Not for any reasons that uh, you're responsible for. It's gone on long enough. So I agree with you, okay? We need to move it along. And he's ready to move it along at this point. That, that may not have been the case in the past for a lot of reasons, okay? So I think we're ready to do that at this point. Mm -hmm. So you want to say four to five months? We'll revisit this. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah. I'd like, a, we, I'd like a, at least a report, not necessarily a reopening of the special permit hearing, but if you could file a report with the department, just so that we can have it on record by mid February. Mid February. Yeah. Uh, I think we'd have probably have a meeting the twenty fourth. On February twenty fourth. February twenty fourth. Yeah. Just a progress yeah. report. Yeah. Uh, Good. Um, I was going to suggest that, right? Yeah. Let us know where things stand. Yeah. Uh, if we choose to have you come in and answer questions, we may reserve that right. Uh, we won't make Monty and your client come back, but if you could. What do you want me on the 24th? I think I'd want you to be available on the 24th. Yeah. <coughs> Give us a progress report. Let us know where things stand. Sure. Um, you know, <coughs> I don't think we're being. Well. From your perspective, I can certainly see that you would think we're being a little overly difficult, but given the fact that it's a yeah, I don't think you are permit, at all, given the issue um, yeah. and what's going on there in the last sure. several years. Yeah, yeah, I don't think we're being You're unreasonable. Not. You're and, not. and just to keep things moving, keep an eye on things. So I think February twenty fourth, we have the progress report sure. back. Yeah. Uh, let us know where things stand. What progress is taking place by yeah. that point? Um, I do appreciate your willing to willingness to work with us and explore options. Um, a little bit disappointed to hear that it won't be affordable housing, but I understand. Um, <coughs> there are people who will be encouraged that you don't intend to tear the building down, which is positive in some respects. Um, any other questions from members of the board? I just want to condemn the fact, uh, amend the fact, I appreciate the fact that you reboarded up some of the windows and painted up the, the, the plywood, the mask to go a little better took away the action boarding sign, so it doesn't look like it's yeah. had a fire or something in there, you know? Right. And shoveling sidewalks. That, that's that been a multi-year issue. I think we're, but fighting, you're doing I think it now we're finally I, getting there. I'm saying thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, Jenny. The um, representative from CBS is actually... Yeah, awesome. yes, I was, oh, I was um, going to so ask. I wanted to I was make sure that maybe we can have him introduce himself. Is it William Peterson? I'm the manager of the CBS at 833 Mass Ave. Thanks for coming. So I take a slightly different view of this. I think the CBS permit is at risk. I think we do have the option of pulling the entire permit because of this. And I just wanted to make sure somebody was here from CBS so we so you heard at least one member of this board thinks the CBS permit is at risk. I don't put the onus on the ARB for a permit from 10 years ago. You came in or whoever came in to ask for this permit. They got it. They liked it. They didn't appeal it. So I would not put the onus on the ARB from 10 years ago for what happened. I think February is a good first step. But what I would be interested in knowing is when are you going to come back with a real proposal for us to look at? Because I sort of feel like February is going to happen. It will drag out, drag out, drag out. So I want to know when. Well, we have to have something back. for February, so we know what we're going to do in March. Okay, I mean that's the reason we're coming back on February 24th. Okay, to give you a progress report, we will have some idea at that point as to how we can use the site. Okay, and we uh, I intend to give you that information uh, as much as I can on February 24th. Well, I mean, if that's where you're going, what I would like to have on February 24th is a date certain when you will have an actual proposal. 
because you're not going to have it on February 24th. No, not at all. So I think what we want to know on February 24th then is when are you going to come back with an actual proposal? Well, I think based on what we mentioned in terms of weeks and months, I think um, you know, with the holidays right around the corner, I think it, hopefully it's reasonable to say the first or second week in January we can get people in there to start cleaning it up and that sort of thing, and then that'll allow us, our team, to get in there and survey the building, um, start getting drawings pulled together, and then um, that allows us to study the zoning piece. So I think, like, you know, we'll have some of that put together for the 24th, and that'll allow us to study all the the nuts and bolts of it, and then in terms of the design, we'll come after that. So I think answering the nuts and bolts of zoning and building allowances and navigating the site in terms of parking and things like that are things that we got to answer before we spend a bunch of money on design that we don't know if it's real design until we answer those questions. So I think that the 24th we can answer some of the, or most of the nuts and bolts questions. And I then after that, yeah. if it's agreeable, then I think it makes sense to proceed with the design. But until we can answer those questions. No, no, I'm not asking for the design on the 24th. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I'm asking for on the 24th. We're going to have an idea about date. what we want to do with when the site. When are going to do that. Right. I would also like to see, at some point, the economics showing why you can't put in at least one unit of affordable. The what? The economics showing why you can't put in at least one unit of affordable housing. You've said that. I'm not questioning mm -hmm. it. But I would like to see the economics of why that can't be I done. was talking about affordable housing for the entire site, okay. which historically was discussed not in the ARB decision, but was discussed back in 2009, mm -hmm. okay? That's what I was talking okay, about. I, I have an open mind, we have an open mind to what we're going to come, we don't even know how many units. If we have six, then affordable housing, okay? Uh, if we have less than that, then we'll have to talk about it. Well, I think we should, I think, I would encourage you to think about whether it's six units or fewer, the potential of putting in at least one affordable mm -hmm. housing unit. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I must say this too, in terms of your comment about the CBS permit being at risk. Okay, uh, that's not what the ARB decision said back in 2009. Okay, it didn't uh, uh, phrase it in that manner. Okay, what it said was that the petitioner requested to come back with a plan, okay, with regard to the Atwood House, okay? And there was no mandate uh, in that uh, 2009 ARB decision that in fact they have to do that, okay? There was discussion about preserving the Atwood House and we're going to do that as much as we can, okay? But there was nothing in the a uh, ARB decision, the way I read it, okay, that basically conditioned uh, the permitting uh, of the CVS, which again has been cast in concrete at this point, okay, which uh, basically conditioned uh, that upon something happening. And this is one permit, it's not one permit for the outcome. No, we know that. It's a separate we permit know that. for the CVS. No, we know it's that. It's one permit. We, we hopefully will never have yeah. to deal right. with but this. I just need to make that point. Right. We okay. hopefully will never right. have to deal with this disagreement. Right. Okay. So I, I just had two um, items that I just want to make to um, build upon what what was just discussed because I, I still haven't heard confirmation from your team. Like what we expect is a timeline, not just some waving my hands about what the next sure. steps are, are going to be, but an actual timeline to be submitted. Which you're going to have when we come back on Thank February 24th. Thank you. I, I appreciate the yeah. confirmation. Yeah. And the other thing that I just wanted to point out, you had made a reference to the fact that the Atwood House was not listed as a significant no, it is. Bu building at the time of the application, but it's actually in the in the notes. All right. I that, stand that corrected. It was. All right. That's all I have. Thanks. Any other comments from members of the board? Okay. I'll open it up to members of the public. Please raise your hand, state your name and address. I'll call on you as I see you. <coughs> Mr. Warden. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> John Warden at 27 Jason Street. <coughs> I think I'm the only person that here who was actually a participant in the hearings when the Redevelopment Board made the decision back in 2009. 
10 years ago. Um, and uh, I, I will say that um, the, the decision itself, uh, you know, says what it says. And it's kind of murky and kind of contradictory and not as inclusive as 10 years later we might expect. But in the context of the discussions that occurred at that time, uh, the expectation was very strong that there would be rapid movement forward uh, to create a, a, an affordable, uh, a, a small affordable housing complex there. Uh, and there were conversations with uh, the Housing Corporation of Arlington. David Levy was the president then, had some preliminary commitments about funding, uh, and uh, it was it was a sort of a subtext to to, to the opinion, uh, the decision uh, of the board that didn't uh, that didn't spell out any details because there weren't any details at that point. It was it was conversation, but I think the belief on the part of the board members, as well as people <coughs> like me and people like uh, David Lee, uh, were that that within a reasonable time we'd move forward to uh, fixing up the house, putting an L on the back. Uh, and putting some affordable housing in there. Now, that didn't happen, as we know, um, and I think the, the, the board, um, uh, maybe they were kind of naive in thinking, well, we'll, we'll have good faith here, we'll just assume these things are going to happen. But they didn't happen, for what, 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 whatever reason uh, uh, is advanced uh, by the petitioner. I'm very glad to hear that, 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 that they do intend to preserve the house or preserve a major private or something. Um, and um, uh, th that, that's very encouraging because those of us who've come uh, to this hearing, there's a number of uh, other people here who have the same concern, uh, you know, we've been worried about this. And we have watched it. We've lived in the town. We, we, we've watched the house uh, disintegrate bit by bit and get boarded up and the sidewalk not being shoveled and the bushes not being trimmed and all that stuff. Uh, so it's, it's great it's going to happen. Um, <coughs> the. Um, the point about the parking and the turnaround, all that stuff, it seems to me that it was uh, it had to be contemplated and wasn't written. They didn't have a plan for the ten spaces or any of that stuff, but it was it was obvious. It must have been obvious to CBS people as well as uh, to to the noise people that if people were going to get to the parking lot in the back of this house, they'd have to go through the CBS lot, and that somehow I'm sure that somehow could be worked out. I don't see how that. Uh, should be a, a, a real impediment. Uh, so uh, I, I say that, and, and by the way, the, the zoning on that property that was owned by the Noyes family for some period of time, the zoning on it was, was R1 uh, under the 75 uh, 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 recodification. Uh, at some point, and I can't remember what year it was, but I remember when it happened, uh, and I uh, <coughs> the, the, the Noyes family filed a, a tin register voter article to change it to the same zoning as the as the auto the, the uh, auto dealership, and um, and the, the redevelopment board just they were ambushed by well I, I don't know why they didn't notice it why they didn't have a hearing on it, uh, but 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 they did and it came up at town meeting one night and it went to the redevelopment board, which just just sat there sort of with their mouths agape and and, and the proponents uh, put, pushed it through and. Uh, um, uh, so that, 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 that's how it got into this, this, this zone to make this one big lot. What they had in mind, I, I don't know, they left the house there. So again, <coughs> we're, we're glad there's going to be progress. We look forward to hearing what's going to happen on February 24th. And uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm pleased that finally some, something uh, is, is, is going to happen. And, and I encourage you to let's all work together and make, make this happen. Thank you. Here, here. Thank you. <coughs> public comment. Mr. Wagner. Um, Carl Wagner of 30 Edge Hill Road. I just wanted to thank the uh, proponents of, of uh, making changes and improvements and development at the property for coming and working with you and thank the ARB for um, holding uh, the project to the terms that uh, were, were spelled out 10 years ago. I think it's really important that people visualize the uh, the Atwood House in the context of the neighborhood. CBS is a, is a really nice part of the community that fits in. It's kind of back from the street. It transitions to the high school nicely. And the Atwood House transitions currently very nicely up to, I think it's the Baptist Church next to it, and with apartment buildings and small uh, retail businesses across from it. So um, what 
shouldn't happen, in my opinion, and I'm not a zoning person really, is we should not build a, a building like on the other side of, uh, of AHS, where uh, there's a monstrosity that is a mixed expensive uh, unit and, and I think now a childcare facility practically towering over people walking by it. So I, I hope that the, the setbacks, the open space, and, uh, and what's right about the Atwood House are preserved in anything that happens. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ruderman. Michael Ruderman, 9 Alton Street. I was a member of the Historical Commission uh, during the early years of uh, you know, dependency of this project. And uh, we were uh, concerned then, and I'm sure the existing commissioners remain uh, you know, concerned that this building is going to be lost to the town by what we call a demolition by neglect. That the accumulated uh, you know, you know, uh, bits of, bits of uh, foregone maintenance, uh, in injuries, vandalisms will uh, you know, pile up to the point where, where someone comes before the board and says, look what terrible shape it's in. We don't have very many options with what to do with it which of course is a function of not having taken care of the property from then to now. I uh, thank Mr. Benson for what I detect I, is, a, is a note of urgency in his comments that uh, nothing has happened for far too long and uh, a, a, suitable, a suitable resolution uh, of, of the, how this property is going to be, um, you know, have its next <coughs> life would not only be welcome but long overdue. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, David Baldwin, uh, Academy Street. Um, I just uh, want to stress that uh, it's not the Jason Russell House, it's not the Whittemore Robbins House, but we have very few of the uh, early 20th century properties along Mass Ave, and as Arlington becomes more and more under pressure for development, I think it's important to save uh, as many of them as we can. And it troubles me a little bit to hear words like, we'll have to make substantial changes, or we'll save as much as we possibly can, which is sort of code word for we're going to take down as much as we can. Um, I think that from the outside, it's important to uh, continue it looking, and, and on the inside, it's what they make of it. But on the outside, I think it's important that it not become a uh, modern uh, uh, home. Anyway. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Seltzer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Don Seltzer, Irving Street. I wasn't planning on speaking at this hearing, um, but I came across something surprising this afternoon about this house that I thought I would share. Um, according to the town, the Atwood House doesn't exist. <laughs> it's not on the assessor's roll. I went into the property card, and it shows the lot, um, values the land. It shows the CVS building, and it has its value but there's no mention, no valuation placed on the Atwood House. It's like it doesn't exist. So base, it looks like for the last decade or so, there have been no taxes, property taxes paid on that building. I, well, I could, or I can allow the applicant yeah, to talk about it. Uh, it's, it's listed as card one and card two. Yeah, Separate address. You have to look a little deeper. Okay, maybe I didn't look in the right place, but I couldn't. Including find the it. Uh, vacancy registration fee being paid on it this past these past two years. So um, it is certainly a separate property in terms of how the assessor is handling it. I don't know how it looks in terms of the property cards or how you searched for it in the database, but it is indeed a property and payments have been made. So you're saying that there is a separate property card for it, and there is a, actually property taxes paid on the building. Mm -hmm. I'll allow them to talk about that. I'm not, okay. yeah. <laughs> not the assessor, yeah. and I'm looking it up. But I'm not in charge of tax Bob collection, like however, I can... Your client would like to speak to that, otherwise we'll move on. It's, it's two cards, and taxes have been paid all these years. I, I don't know what else to tell you. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you. That's enough. Any other? Comments, questions, concerns? All right, seeing none, I will close the hearing until February 24th. I look forward to having you back here then with some details. Uh, I and, would suggest and that. A, it, and a timeline. And a timeline. 
<clears throat> I would suggest that if you schedule a meeting with Mr. Byrne, that you ask Mr. Lau to be present, fit, depending on his schedule. What, a meeting with my friend? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great you idea. Yeah. You have some history. Look, with I'm looking right? for input as much as I can get, okay, whether it's informal or whatever, from all you folks, okay? If uh, you uh, want to give us input, at this stage, we're just starting, okay? I look forward to it, okay? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, mm -hmm. Anything else? Now so we're closing the hearing, or can we get to that? What's that? I'll let these gentlemen walk away. Okay, we're we'll walking away. So <laughs> the special thank permit, you. we're not closing it, we're continuing. We're continuing it to right. February 24th. Right. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, so we will, what we will do is adjourn and reconvene it. So we have a motion to adjourn and reconvene. I'm sorry, Kim. Yeah. 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 What's up? Yes. 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 Yes.